Enola Holmes, one of Netflix's newest offerings, stars Millie Bobby Brown and focuses on the younger sister of Sherlock Holmes as she tries to solve the mystery of why her mother has gone missing and along the way also gets caught up in a murder plot with a useless boy who we know is useless because all men are useless as the movie delights in constantly reminding us. This movie is based on a series of YA novels that I've never heard of, but I understand that I'm not the target audience for a film like this, and that's fine, I don't have to be. But considering who they're aiming this thing at, there are some themes and messages in this movie that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe not as many as I thought there would be when I saw the trailer, but they were still pretty hard to miss. And I'll get to that stuff in a minute, but first off, there are some good things to point out. Millie Bobby Brown is gonna be one of the biggest stars in the world. She's got so much charm, so much charisma, she's in pretty much every scene of this movie, and she carries it and makes it look easy. Emotional scenes, action scenes, there's nothing here that she doesn't do well. That this movie works at all is because of her. And the other name actors don't have a lot to do, but everyone makes the most of their comparatively little screen time. And that's actually kind of a bummer because I thought Henry Cavill as Sherlock Holmes could have been cool, and the movie seems to think so too because it starts with Enola listing all of Sherlock's amazing accomplishments, but his role is a glorified cameo which I think may work against this movie because he's the one who's getting all the attention right now, and I think people may watch this movie hoping he has a bigger part and then get disappointed when they find out he doesn't. The movie even teases the possibility of him having a bigger role later on, but then they don't follow through on it. Kind of annoying, really. Also, I really enjoyed the music. The score by Daniel Pemberton stood out as a highlight for me. It felt very fitting for a light-hearted mystery adventure, but also infuses the film with an energy and a sense of fun that it might not have had otherwise. Now, where the movie falters a bit is in three areas. The first is story structure. There's two different storylines here, the missing mother and the murder plot, which seem unrelated at first, but then they kind of tie together, but only loosely. In fact, the movie is much more focused on the murder plot, so everything the trailer focused on was a bit of a bait-and-switch, weirdly enough. Now, I do think the murder plot is the more interesting one, and that story I thought was fine, but when they try to tie the mother's disappearance to it at the end, it feels cheap and inauthentic because of the second issue with the movie, the feminism angle. I am so tired of female-led movies trying to force-feed their feminist ideologies to the audience. Not because I'm anti-woman or anti-equality, I'm not. It's because the people making these things only seem to know one way to do this. By ramming the idea down our throats that women are awesome and men are the worst. That's actually one of the major themes of this movie. Now, it's not nearly as egregious as you may have seen in other projects in the last couple years, but it's there. Multiple male characters are referred to as useless. The nicest thing that's said about any male character is that he's not entirely an idiot, and that actually has to be said by him about himself. Also, there are so many lines peppered throughout the script about how you shouldn't be thrown off course by anyone, especially men, and how you have two paths, the one you choose and the one others choose for you, others meaning men, and this is all being done in the interest of female empowerment, but it doesn't understand, like so many similar movies don't understand, that you don't have to drag men down to build women up. But with a lot of filmmakers, that seems to be the only arrow in their quiver when they do a project like this. Now thankfully, it doesn't hammer that nail as hard as I've seen other movies do recently. Mycroft is in this thing just to be an asshole, and to represent the idea that women shouldn't be what men want them to be, or what society wants them to be. Not terribly original. But there are a couple male characters who seem to be decent people. Specifically the male lead, whose name I'm not even gonna try to remember, and Sherlock, although he's on the sidelines for the whole movie. And to my slight surprise, the feminism angle is never elevated to Yas Queen Slay levels. Like, there's a couple fight scenes Enola gets into with this assassin, who's a grown man, and yeah, she puts up a better fight than she really should be able to, given that she's 90 pounds and 5 foot nothing, but I was expecting her to just embarrass this guy, and instead she gets roughed up, 
realizes that she can't overpower him and then has to use her wits to escape, which was a lot easier to buy into. Even during the final fight in the climax, she has this moment of panic where she thinks, I can't beat this guy, I don't know what to do, it's hopeless which is then quickly followed by her beating him. So yes, the movie is definitely pushing hard how awesome Enola is, and yes, sometimes it can be too much, but it keeps her toned down and sympathetic enough that you don't want to not root for her at least. And the third issue is with some of the creative choices toward the end. Without spoiling too much, there's a moment in the climax that teases the story going surprisingly dark, and when it happened, I thought to myself, oh wow, that's actually a pretty brave choice. I want to see where this goes. But then they take it back, and they go the safe route instead. And I get that, I do. They're playing to a young audience here, and I'm assuming this is what happened in the book, so they're kind of stuck with it. But I thought the brave choice would have been a lot more compelling and a lot more powerful. And then there's the way the plot with the mother is wrapped up. This, to me, felt like the flimsiest part of the movie, because one, it ties directly into the female empowerment theme, which it felt really unnecessary and forced for two straight hours, and two, because the story of her disappearance should be concluded at this point, and it is, but then it isn't. And I'm not sure why, because the reason why she disappeared has kind of been resolved. And I guess the filmmakers wanted Enola to be completely independent now, without authority figures or parents or anything, and they're also obviously sequel baiting us, but there's no real reason why the mother can't be around now, so the whole thing just feels awkward. Still, I found myself liking Enola Holmes a bit more than I thought I would. It's well made, Millie Bobby Brown is fantastic, and the movie can be fun and charming when it wants to be, but it gets too caught up in the gender politics for its own good. The messages are more innocent than you've seen in other things recently, but they do hold the movie back in my opinion. I think a movie about Sherlock Holmes's little sister, who also solves mysteries and doesn't let the fact that she's a girl be such a driving force in the story could potentially have been cool. She could have been a detective who happens to be a girl. Girl. That was the movie I was hoping for. But they made a movie about a girl detective, which to me spells out that a lot of people in Hollywood are still annoyingly behind the curve with this stuff. Let me know what you thought of Enola Holmes in the comments down below. Also, if you like what you see here, ding that bell icon and follow me on social media to be notified when I upload new stuff. The link is down there. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and make sure you're still subscribed because the biggest mystery that needs solving, way bigger than any mystery in this movie, is how to beat the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, but there's so much more to come. So do all the YouTube things, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.